three friends Frank, Kevin, and Brad are ready to embark on the path to adulthood. The world is still too obscure for them, but they want to discover all its secrets, especially the charms of the opposite sex. And meanwhile they spend time in the treehouse and collect things, the meanings of which they don't know, in a special sacred box. Among the other things turns out to be pictures of Frank's mother. The boy doesn't get much for it, except that she looked a lot like Grace Kelly. So says his father Tom Wheeler. Tom knows a little more about male-female relationships than his friends. He understands that girls like guys who can dance, but there's no way he can learn that. His father cannot give any practical advice on this matter, because he is too busy with his work saving the endangered animals and plants in the ancient swamp near their home. He does not want to talk to his son about his mother, nor does he want to talk about other adult topics. The main question on Frank's mind is, where is the point at which you can touch to drive a woman crazy? That's what it says in the magazine. Dad isn't sure that such a place even exists. Frank is in love with a girl named Stacy, but she likes Brad. At the same time, Stacy's friend looks at Frank with amorous eyes. Frank and his friends are no longer children, and they are interested in the peculiarities of the female body. They try to get more details from adult movies, but it is much better to see everything in person. The boys are fired up with the idea of seeing a woman's head, and Brad knows where to make that wish come true. All he has to do is go to town and have a hundred dollars with him. It's said and done. The guys are scraping together all their savings, selling off things, and Brad arranges a paid fitting of his leather jacket, which all the girls are crazy about. Together, the friends raise $113. Warned by their parents not to show up for dinner, the boys ride their bikes into town to pursue their dreams. The city is no place for children, there are too many dangers, and the boys quickly become convinced of this, naively believing that every other prostitute is here. They offer money to all parsing women to strip. At best they are ignored, at worst the guys get slapped in the face. When they see the money, the guys get noticed. A street tramp. He tricks the kids into luring them into the parking lot and taking the cash. His plans are thwarted by a girl named V, who was just having fun with her customers in the car. She is the one the boys were looking for. She needs the money, because the customer left her in the parking lot without paying a dime. V, after meeting the guys, agrees to get naked for them for money, because she needs to give the dollars. Frank is a real gentleman. He is well-mannered and treats V like a lady. After making sure that the boys are not dangerous, the girl takes them to the hotel. In the room where V is staying, Frank notices a picture of Grace Kelly. The girl confesses that she dreams of being like her and marrying a prince. Frank realizes that his dream has changed. He wants not a woman's body, but a mother's, and V is the perfect candidate for the role of mother. That's why he closes his eyes when V finally undresses and shows off her charms. It's a real shock for the boys. Now they feel all grown up. And immediately he tries to smoke, stating that after adult entertainment it is supposed to smoke a cigarette. But none of them has a match. They like to feel like men. But their problems are not childish. It turns out that while they were out walking around the city, someone stole their bicycles. Once again, V comes to the rescue, even though she herself is in big trouble. She quarrels with her patron Cash and wants to quit her profession by borrowing a car from her employer. Without his knowledge, V finds the confused boys on the street and takes them home to the suburbs. Frank shows her his house and admits one last time that he didn't see anything when we undressed. Finding that the car won't start, V asks Frank for permission to enter the house and use the phone. Here he introduces her to her father, but so far V can't hear. He tells her father that she is his classmate's math tutor. Frank's dad tries to help with the car, but is not yet successful. He admits that he admires the girl and her profession. V is genuinely surprised that anyone could read this kind of activity as normal. They feel sympathy for each other, but there are misunderstandings. They have different professions in mind. V is amazed, because it has been so long since anyone has looked at her. All of her surroundings don't even consider her a person. And here is such a tolerant acceptance of her profession. The car can't be repaired until morning, so Vi sets out to walk around the suburbs looking for a part-time job, since she doesn't have a penny with her. Her appearance attracts everyone's attention, and her owls is envy. Here she even finds a potential client. However, Frankie shows up offering to let her sleep in the treehouse. At this point, for the first time, Frank gets the attention of Stacy, whom he likes so much. 
She asks if Frank will go to the dance, but he admits that he can't dance at all. In fact, the girls were only looking for an excuse to meet V, but she introduces herself as Frank's aunt and quickly takes him home. Frank's father devotes all his time to saving the preserve from destruction. He doesn't have enough money to buy back the property, but dad's thoughts are on more than that. He admits to his son that he likes you, and it looks a lot like Ray Skelly. Frank is pleased. He has a plan mit Yurt. He brings all the necessities and even his mother's nightgown to the treehouse. V immediately figures out the guy. She realizes that he wants to arrange dates for her with her dad. But Frank admits that he wants more. He sees Vi as daddy's wife in his dreams and is willing to tell her a lie to do so. He lies to her that daddy knows about the real occupation. V has nothing against it. In the morning, Frank brags to his friends that V slept over at his cabin. They don't believe it, and Brad is even willing to bet his jacket that it's a lie. After school they want to go and see for themselves. School is not going well for Frank. He flunked a quiz on the topic of female genitalia. And now the teacher is demanding an oral report from him with notes, a visual aid. The deadline is the end of the week. At this time, V came down from the cabin and decided to check out Frank's living quarters. Turning on the TV, the girl saw that Cash, her employer, had been killed, which meant she was next in line, since a large sum of money had been stolen. And the mafia behind such a dirty business did not forgive such debts. Before he dies, Cash tells mafioso Vosler that it was Vi who stole the money. The girl begins to be hunted. She wants to escape, but the car still won't start. Sosi takes her bicycle and, though it looks rather ridiculous, goes in search of Frank's father. She finds him in the very low place he is desperately trying to save. The man arranged for the children to take a field trip to show the beauty of the wilderness. Seeing V here was a pleasant surprise for Tom. Once again, the girl is amazed at how peaceful the place is, admires her work, and is willing to do anything to get V to meet a client. I need to get out of this place right away. You're late for your meeting with a client. It turns out that they have many common interests. Realizing this, Vi no longer wants to leave. It is safe in the suburbs, they are unlikely to look for her here. She returns home and takes a bath. At this point she is discovered by a group of friends. Frank realizes that he has won the bet and takes his reward, Brad's leather jacket, which all the girls at school are excited about. The other boys, meanwhile, are worried that V will blab about their actions if she stays living in the suburbs. Frank asks V for help with his homework, then agrees. Frank once again tries to ask his father for details about his mother, but nothing succeeds. Although father and son have a great understanding, the subject is taboo in the family. The next day Frank comes to school in a leather jacket and puts on a real show for his classmates. Distracting the teacher, he lets V in through the window. On her body he draws the location of the organs of the female genital system. The classmates are thrilled, especially the guys. Now Frank and the star of the class. The teacher is shocked, but the assignment is done. After all, she said it herself. Breaking into the classroom, the teacher makes V run out the window, but the class sees her off with a round of applause. Frank is still concerned about the location of a point on her body that, by touching it, can drive a woman crazy. He approaches V with this question, but she denies its existence. Tom is happy to see V in his house and invites her to dinner. During their romantic outing, they meet many familiar people, a teacher from Frank's school, Stacy and her mother, and even one of V's former clients who happens to be Kevin's father. This is when V realizes for the first time that Tom doesn't know her real profession, but is sure she is a tutor. Frankie has tricked her, so she runs away in a hurry. After finishing her date early, she wants to leave, but the car is still malfunctioning. V tells her that she has been living in a treehouse for several days now. Here V confesses that she is actually a nocturnal butterfly. Tom is shocked and is not yet ready for further dialogue. Frank explains himself to his father. The boy assures his father that Vi is his perfect match. Meanwhile, the girl is disappointed. After all, she thought she had finally found a man who sees her soul, not just her body. She is going to leave, even though she has nowhere to go. She doesn't want to talk to Frank, calling him a liar. In desperation, Frank throws his sacred box in the trash with all the unsolved mysteries, the locket given to Vi, and even pictures of his mother. His dream is shattered. However, V and Tom find strings of rapport to continue communicating. They develop a romantic relationship. V talks about his difficult life, and Tom talks about his. 
they are comfortable together. And they realize this love. V confesses that her real name is Ava. That same night, Kevin's father informs a mobster that he saw V in the suburbs, and Wasler himself sets out to find her. The criminals are on the trail. Although they don't know the exact address, finding the man in the suburbs won't be too difficult. Frank is very happy that Daddy and V are now on their way. The boy apologizes for lying to V quite a bit and offers to teach Frank how to dance. The lessons go quite well. This seems to be it, the happy family. But Wasler is getting very close. Only by some miracle he could not find V. In order not to put Frank and Tom in danger, V decides to leave urgently. She writes a note to Tom that she took $50 in his wallet and leaves. Tom figures out why the car wasn't running and runs to inform V. He finds Frank's note about going to the dance. He jumps behind the wheel of the car. V goes to the dance, assuming she is there too. A mobster follows him, recognizing his companion's car. Frank goes to the school disco to win Stacy's heart, but so far only attracts the attention of her friend. Unexpectedly, V shows up. She has come to say goodbye, but is willing to help Frank get the girl's attention. After a rousing dance, Stacy is finally won over. She expects Frank to ask her to dance, but all she gets is a jacket, and Frank himself asks his friend, who has suffered so long from unrequited love. In the midst of the disco, Wasler shows up. He takes a hostage, but the uproar prevents him from carrying out his plan and returning the money. V finally realizes that the money stolen from Wasler is in Cash's car. The car she arrived in sets off a fire alarm. Hurriedly leaving the school disco, V drives off in that car again, but the kids are driving it. Frank drives and Brad pedals. Wasler ties up after him. The chase ends at a railroad crossing. No sooner had the children and V jumped out of the car, taking with them the backpack Tom had left in it, than the car exploded. Wasler was left with nothing, and the money burned up in the car. V disappeared. Tom and Frank were very upset about it, and V went back to town. She wasn't afraid to go to the big boss and ask him to let her go. He agrees and promises to spare her from Wasler's pursuit. Bi packs her bags and says goodbye to her old life. All that's left of her is the backpack she managed to get from the car. Opening it, V is surprised. Inside was the money Wasler was looking for, and now it belongs to her. Tom is upset that V is gone, but his fight for the wilderness is not over. He has chained himself to his car and is ready to go to jail just to keep the place. That's when he gets the news that the property has been purchased and put in his name. He is listed as the owner. V has done this. The police pull back and V and Tom realize they can't live without each other. V decides to stay in the suburbs. Finally, Frank finds the mother he's been dreaming of for so long. It now becomes clear to everyone where the one place that, when touched, can drive a woman crazy. It's her heart. Thank you all for watching this video to the end. I try to make new videos almost every day. I will be very pleased if you subscribe to the channel. Also, check out my other videos that have appeared on your screen. Bye everyone.